You're listening to Enhance's bonus segment, Weird Wednesday. Weird Wednesday is our time to talk about the strange, the unsettling, and the spooky. Hello, Enhance listeners. Thank you so much for tuning back in to another Weird Wednesday. Ooh. <laughs> And this Weird Wednesday is uh, a special win- Weird Wednesday. It's our Halloween edition, and um, it is our Horror Hump Day. So you not only Ooh. get <laughs> you not only get a Weird Wednesday, but you get a Horror Hump Day today. And today, um, Gabby is going to start us off by just kind of introducing like the origins of Halloween, giving us a little context, all that good stuff, because uh, we love history. And then after that, I'm going to go into telling you guys some scary stories that are personal scary stories from me and my family when we lived in a haunted house, but also just generally from time because uh, my family's just haunted AF. So, (laughs) I mean, (laughs) whatever, (laughs) whatever works, whatever works. Oh goodness. Well, Gabby, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Hey guys, it's me. Good baby. It's me. Oh my God. Wicked. R.I.P. Okay. So let's talk about Halloween. And since it is, you know, the month of spookiness. Um, so everyone knows it's October 31st. Um, and it actually originally came from ancient Celtic um, like vibes and festivals. This is where a lot of the origination of like big bonfires would come from, people wearing costumes. Like this, this was like the thing to do. Like this was such an intricate part of like the Celtic culture. October 31st pretty much marked the end of summer and the having the harvest season kind of beginning, but also like kind of showing that it's going to get darker. It's going to get cold. We're going to, you know, it's just one of those things where it really was uh, associated with the mark of the end of the summer and beginning of like the cold winters because for whatever reason they they have fall but they don't really associate like fall or autumn it was literally like here's summer here's winter boom like they didn't really have that differentiation yet which was kind of interesting but also because a lot of humans at the time back in the day would pass away from colder Uh. temperatures they associated also it with human death that makes sense so is are you saying this is was like the time period where basically they had like some months but then like all of the winter months were just known as winter so it was just like one it was like winter fall and winter with were one thing and then it was like spring and then summer and then winter. Uh, okay so they didn't really have the in-between season yet Uh, okay Yeah. So it's kind of interesting to see that. Um, But also, you know, not only with like human death, but colder weather also started causing, you know, troubles in crops and like pretty much killing off a lot of the crops and food sources for humans. Also, like just making it harder to survive in these cold times. Because we need food. Yeah. And having to like really ration all of that stuff. Um. So what ended up happening is a lot of Druids, in a sense, built this like huge bonfire celebration uh, to burn the dead crops. Yeah. And they would also sacrifice some animals, uh, which was kind of interesting, considering that like those could have helped them survive longer. Yeah. Like if they, they just like eat them. them. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, I don't. That is another confusing thing for me, but but they would do that to all the Celtic deities and things like that. Um, and they wore costumes and a lot of them had to do with like dead animal heads and skins. Uh, and they would try to tell each other's fortune. So a lot of like palm reading kind of came up during this era. They would relight the fire in their homes after the big bonfire. And that mm-hmm. was like to help them protect themselves during the winter. Love so it's that. very much it's very much a winter type of thing. But then, you know, Halloween, we're going to talk about how Halloween kind of came to America. And since that's where both me and Sam are from. So pretty much <laughs> anyway. So it was actually very limited uh, because there was a lot of rigid Protestant beliefs at the time. But the state that it actually originated in came was Maryland. And then a lot of the southern colonies started adapting it. And then one thing led to another. And here we are. Yeah. Um, nothing, there's nothing that America loves more than a cultural appropriation. You know? Oh, of course. Um, but 
pretty much as the, you know, beliefs and customs kind of differentiated from like the European groups and like more of the Celtic tradition, um, Americans, Americans version of Halloween kind of came from, you know, play parties, which was pretty much the same thing as a bonfire, kind of like the Celtics had, except it was more like neighbors would like sit around and tell, you know, stories of people who died and sing and dance. And like, again, with the similarity coming with Celtic culture, telling each other's fortunes. So it's kind of come from a really long time. And then by the middle of the 19th century, we kind of came up with this more autumn, uh, fall season. And these festivities were more common, but Halloween is just celebrated, you know, slowly making its way towards the entire country. And then it became a whole thing. So on that note, uh, let's talk about the history of trick-or-treating. European traditions uh, kind of came over to America as well, uh, you know, with the you know, costumes and the going, you know, house to house asking for food or money type of thing. Um, but then it became today's tradition of trick or treating where it's more, you know, doing candy or like little trinkets or something, uh, to hand out to kids. Um, so it actually used to be very much an adult thing and then very much segued, especially in America to a more, um, like young children, adults thing. But I feel like in recent times, a lot of trick-or-treating especially has kind of, it's very much only kids, but I feel like Halloween in general is still very much enjoyed by all ages. Oh, yeah. So so that's really interesting. It's my favorite uh, that, holiday. <laughs> I know. It's so cute. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of that. Very much a Celtic root, root thing. I won't say that there's not other cultures that you know, do celebrate and have special, you know, different things, uh, to do with Halloween, um, like maybe like different traditions, but, uh, it, it originated with the Celts. So that's kind of interesting. My m more recent ancestors that like weren't from America on my mom's side were from Ireland. They directly like immigrated from Ireland after America was like a thing. And, um, I have always, like, found Celtic mythology super interesting, which sucks because, like, most of Celtic mythology has been, like, kind of destroyed by the church. But, um, yeah, I mean, from what's left of it, I think it's super cool. <laughs> well, and on that, on that, Mark, what you just said right there, actually, that's why November 1st is All Saints Day. Mm -hmm. Because there was a lot of... Um, Catholics that believed that we needed to like bless each other and have like a better celebration in a sense. Uh, <laughs> oh, so what they would do, literally, they would they would pretty much pray and do an All Souls Day or All Saints Day, um, and so they would do big bonfires, they would do parades, they would dress up in costumes as saints, angels, and devils mm -hmm. to celebrate what they called All Hallows. So it's kind of interesting to see how you try to celebrate one culture the day before and then someone rebuttaling it with a different like holiday after. It's kind of a <laughs> it's kind of a little smack in the face, but it is yeah. okay. But yeah, so that's the little little bit I have here on the history of Halloween. Nice. <laughs> I'm finished. That's and that's the history of Halloween. Yeah. Ooh. In 15 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to get started now. And Correct. you guys, I know that, you know, some of you that are listeners, because we talk about self-help and healing and all that stuff. Some of you may not be very religious. Some of you may not be very spiritual and that's okay. You may not believe in ghosts, but I'm telling you the shit that I'm about to tell you happened to me and happens to my family. Now you can, if you don't believe in ghosts, that's fine. Come up with your own theory, come up with your own thing. You could say is real people messing with us. I don't care. But this shit happens, so I'm going to walk you through it, okay? Do so the it. first thing I want to talk about is that in an earlier Weird Wednesday, it was our very
very first one, I talked about a black cloaked figure that I had seen since I was a very small child. And so I'm going to tell you guys about the four different instances where I saw them in a very summarized thing because I just want to like recant. I want to, yeah, I want to tell you guys about it. So first black, a black cloaked figure that I saw was when I was a kid. I think I told you guys about this. It was in a dream that I had and it was a nightmare where I saw, I was like walking outside in the forest outside of my house or like around the like bend in the forest outside my house where like there was a part where you could walk around a, a like edge of woods where you couldn't see my house anymore and i remember i was looking for my brother and sister and it was really gray outside i was probably like people are gonna be like you can't remember things that early but i'm telling you i have memories from when i was two years old because i told my mom like i literally went to him was like oh my gosh yeah i remember that happened blah blah blah, blah. and she was like sam there's no way you were two like you were barely two and I'm like, I remember. And I do have quite a memory in my noggin. Like I have quite the rem the rememberer up there. <laughs> yeah, you got a good elephant brain over there. I do, I do. Yeah, I really like, it's hard for me to forget shit. But um, basically though, um, this memory was a nightmare I had when I was um, two years old. And it was basically like, I was walking out looking for my brother and sister and I rounded this like bend in the forest. And I saw this figure in a dark cloak and uh, he looked like he was like on fire, but there was no flames. So like, it was just the cloak and stuff were rippling like flames. And his face was like just a skeleton and it looked like it was melting. And he was like screaming, walking toward me. And I like freaked out and turned around and went to run back to my house. But it didn't matter how much I ran. Like I was not getting any closer to my house. And then I woke up. So that was the first time I ever saw the black cloak figure scared the shit out of me, scarred me for life. You know, all those good things. Trauma. <clears throat> then yeah, trauma. That's what this whole trauma. podcast is about. <laughs> trauma. So the second time is whenever I was seven. And that's where that age is whenever most of the stuff happened between the ages of um, five and seven is when a bunch of this story is going to be coming from and so this is something that i'm telling you i could call any of the people mentioned in this story and ask them hey do you remember when this happened and they could tell you the same exact way i'm telling you now that it happened this wasn't just like a few people this was like me my brother my sister my uh, sister's boyfriend slash brother's best friend because they were the same person a family friend of the, of the family friend's girlfriend another family friend my mom my dad members of the church like literally everyone witnessed like there were tons of people that like saw this happening so anyways, but um, whenever I was seven, I lived in a haunted house and I saw two of the black cloak figures then. And I will save that for the story. So, but that's the second time I saw them. Third time was during a sleep paralysis episode I had whenever I was a senior in college. I told you guys about that in the sleep paralysis episode. Fourth time was whenever I had a sleep paralysis episode um, after I graduated from college because I was taking Vyvanse for my eating disorder. And that is a, that was the fourth time that I had seen them. And I saw two then too. There is a fifth time that the black cloak figure came up, but I'm going to wait because it happens in a chronological order with the story. But all that being said, those are the four times that we saw or that I like had an interaction with uh, the black cloak figure. Um, and I did have another dream about the black cloak figure that was really weird. I actually just like didn't even think about it until just now that I'm talking about it. It was really weird, though, because I was seeing everything from a third point of view, third person point of view. And um, <clears throat> I was walking through or like the. I saw the black cloaked figure. It was like I wasn't actually there. I was just kind of like almost like a camera angle, if that makes sense in the stream. And it was after I had that second sleep paralysis episode. And so I'm watching the black cloaked figure walk through like this alleyway in the apartment complex I was living in because it was like a New Orleans style apartment complex where it had like a big courtyard in the middle and like all this other stuff. And so um, whenever I was watching him, he walks out to the center and there was a huge storm going on up above and he like lifted his hand into the air and lightning struck him all dramatically and he like held the lightning in his hand. Well, whenever it happened, this is what was creepy. When the lightning hit him, his hood fell off and it was oh. me. It was Ooh. me. I was under the black, like I was the cloaked figure. And Stop. I looked like the me that was in the black cloak, like looked over at where I was at, but I wasn't actually there and like made eye contact with me and smiled. And I woke up. Yeah. Why the heck? I yeah. literally, I was over here like, you were like the lightning hit. I was like, okay, Zeus. Yeah. I see you. And then it was me. <laughs> oh my Psych. God. That's so, <laughs> that's traumatizing. Oh yeah. God. Are you okay? <laughs> Well, you know, I don't know. I think my family, like I said, my family, my family is just haunted. Like we're just cursed. Jeez. I don't know. 
Um, not cursed, but we are haunted. Um, so now let's get into the scary story. I have thought a lot about this story because I'm like, I think it would be super cool to write a script about this one day. But the thing is that there's no real plot going on. So if I do write a script about it one day, I'd have to like make up a story plot or whatever for it and just have it like based on true events. So today, whenever I share the story, it's not really going to ruin anything if I do write this into a script one day, because like I said, I'll have to come up with fictional shit to happen in the script because there's no actual plot to this. Right. So basically, whenever I was seven, um, my, no, whenever I was five, sorry, whenever I was five, it was like right toward the end of me being four years old, I was about to turn five. And my mom wanted me to so yeah, I would have been four, but my mom wanted me to go to a different school system than the one where we lived because it wasn't a great school system at the time. And so my mom's sister lived in Clanton, my hometown where I told you guys about. And so at this time, we moved to a um, really cute little like yellow house, um, just outside of Clanton in a town called Verbena, which is where I went to school, I went to Verbena High School. Yeah, so at, whenever I was four, we were looking at that. And then I turned five that March. And so that summer, we moved into that house. And then I started school year on um, that August, just like any scary movie, everything seemed normal to start with everything was fine. Everything was chill. This was the first thing that really started happening. My sister started hearing a scratch on her window and it would wake her up out of her sleep and she'd like hear it and she like to start with wouldn't really look over to see what was going on she heard this over and over again at night and finally she turned and looked at one point where she pretended to be asleep and she just kind of squinted her eyes and she said that she could see a little boy sitting at her window like scratching oh. on the window looking in at her and she said that he had to have been like like nine or ten like, he wasn't very old. And so my sister is seven years older than me. So whenever I was five, she was like 12, 13, you know. So he was very young, you know. And so um, but she said that he had to have looked like at least a few years younger than him, uh, younger than her, but he was older than me. And so, um, and my brother, just so the age frame, you know, everything is two years older than my sister and nine years older than me. So whenever I was five, he was 14. So they were like 12, 13, 14. That was the age frame they were in because they're just yet, just less than two years apart. So there's like a weird little gap, but basically two years. Sure. So anyway, so she started seeing this little boy sitting at her window scratching. And so she, you know, was like, where could this little boy even be like sitting at? Because the window was kind of up high. So she goes outside um, the next day, like after seeing him the first time and looks and the only place he could have sat on was the air conditioner unit that was outside air conditioner units have that like weird vents, the vent that's on the top. That's like really sharp. And if you touch it or sit on it, like it will cut you. So she's like, how am I, how is he sitting up here scratching him on window? So she tells my mom about it and my mom doesn't believe her. My dad doesn't believe her. My dad, um, was not my brother and sister sad. That was their stepdad. They were my half siblings, but all I have are half siblings. So like there's no difference to me, you know, like they're just right, my siblings. Right. The little boy continued to show up at like her window. And so she told my brother and my brother, she had an extra bed in her room. So my brother started sleeping in there and he would stay on the bed that was um, like next to the window. And for the first, like for the first little bit, he, the little boy didn't come back. And my brother was like, is this really happening? Well, one night I woke up in the middle of the night and I had a nightmare. And so to tell you the structure of my house. So if you walked in through the front door, there was our living room and our living room and kitchen were shared. And there was just like a little bar that came out in between, like it was shared space. And there was a little bar that came out between the living room and kitchen that just separated it, but it was still like shared a big open space. And then if you walked into the kitchen and went to the left, there was an extra room that we used as like a pet room. And then there was a room right next to it. That was my brother's room. If you walked from the living room, taking a left down the hall, the first room on the left was my room. Then there was a room right across the hall. That was the master bedroom. That's where my mom and dad slept. And then if you continued down the hall, the last door on the left was my sister's room. But there was also a bathroom that connected my sister's room in my room. And so it was like sort of like a suite setup where it was like two okay. rooms connected to my bathroom and the bathroom didn't have an entrance from the hall. You'd have to either walk into my sister's room to get there or my room to get there. And so I woke up in the middle of the night and felt like, and kind of had like a bad dream. And so I wanted to like go to my mom's room or go to my sister's room. And me and my sister were like really, really close when I was younger. And so I just walked through the bathroom to her room and um, my brother was asleep on the floor, like kind of in the middle of the room. And I guess he just didn't want to sleep on the bed, the like, bare, like the spare bed that was next to the window that night. So I go and lay down on it. And then all of a sudden, my sister like shoots up and looks at me. And my brother also like they both hear something and they look at me. And so I sit up and I'm like, what are you guys looking at? And my sister's like, do not turn around. Like, don't turn around. 
don't look out the window. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I hear the scratching behind me. And I don't turn around and look. I'm just like, uh, what the fuck? And so, like, at this point, I remembered my sister saying stuff to my mom. So I kind of, like, put two and two together as a small child. But I still was just kind of like, what's going on? And so my brother came over and just, like, grabbed me and, like, pulled me off the bed and, like, shut the, like, cl- close the blinds and curtains so that the little boy couldn't see him. But what had happened was that, like, while they heard the scratching and set up real quick to see him, and then they found me in the bed there right in front of the little boy who was scratching on the window. And so they were just like, ah! Like, they were freaked out because they were afraid, like, something was going to happen to me. And so after that, my brother did see the little boy behind me. And so he went, he told my mom and dad, and they still didn't believe him. So at this point, like, this has been happening for months now. And because this whole story takes place over the span of like two years, like I said, whenever we moved out of that house, I was seven. And so, but my mom and dad still didn't believe them. And so they just started, my brother just started staying in my sister's room, like he would sleep on the floor or in that spare bed and I didn't go back in there. And so the next thing that started happening is that um, one day my, my sister and I were at home alone. And this only happened one time. Now, there were certain instances that were very similar to this, but this specific thing only happened one time. We were home by ourselves, and something that we started hearing, and this really marked like the beginning of it, but it happened for a little bit after that too. We started hearing children laughing. And I know that that's like. Absolutely (laughs) not. You're typically like, anytime anytime you hear or see a happy child in a horror film, you just know it's going to go bad. And so, but with this, like, they didn't sound malicious. Like, it genuinely sound like, sound like children laughter. And so we weren't really creeped out about, about it. But then when we were home one day by ourselves, it was just me and my sister, we started hearing, like, footsteps running through the house. And nope. Nope. Whenever <laughs> I'm running, and I'm running away. <laughs> whenever we started hearing these footsteps, they were like little pitter patters. And we heard a little boy and little girl laughing. And basically from putting two and two together, hearing them laughing, hearing things they were saying to each other, they were playing tag. But there was one creepy thing that happened where me and my sister started following them to the house, like trying to figure out where they were. We were trying to see them and everything else. And we would see them kind of like bump into things like we would see stuff move, but it wasn't like they were maliciously throwing shit across the kitchen or anything like that. And so we followed them into this one room. And we didn't hear them, and it was really, really silent. And I want to say it was my sister's room, either my sister's room or my mom's room. I remember it was on the hall, same hall my room was on, but it wasn't my room. And everything got really quiet, and we were looking around, and then all of a sudden, like, right next to my sister's face, we both hear, tag, you're it, and then, like, two children running, and, like, running away. And that, like, literally, we were like, what the fuck? Like, you know, like, losing it. And so we run into the kitchen, I mean, like, run back into the living room, like, kitchen area, and we hear them outside on the front, like, on the front porch. And so, and we see, like, stuff kind of moving around, and we walk outside, and my mom is pulling back up from, like, I guess she was getting groceries. I don't know what she, where she was at that day. But we tried telling her, and my mom still did not believe us. Absolutely so, not. After yeah. all of that. Yeah, I know. And so, basically, <laughs> then this is what happened next, okay? So, this no. is where things start to pick up just a little bit. No. So, my mom <laughs> wakes, starts waking up in the middle of the night because she hears a kid screaming, Mama! Like, here's a ch- <laughs> Like, here's us. Yeah. And so, Run, she goes. Move, like, she wakes up. Get out up. of there. Leave. <laughs> and she, my mom has, like, this weird nightly ritual where... Like, or she used to. Now that she's older, she doesn't really do this anymore. But when we lived in that house, like, you know, like, when you watch, like, haunted, scary, like, movies or whatever. And, like, there's always the woman that's in, like, a nightgown with the candelabra, like, walking through the house, like, checking on everything. Oh, my like, God. Like, 1800s, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, that's that's my mom. And so, I love not really, that. she didn't really use a candelabra, but she did have, like, the a nightgown. A candelabra? Like, yeah. Lumineer, is that you? Yeah. Lumineer. <laughs> Lumiere. <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. Yes, be our guest. <laughs> I mean, could you imagine just fucking like B R in this like scary yeah. hallway? What? The- <laughs> and you just see like a candlestick like dancing around. Like all of a sudden, uh, you and McGregor comes out, <laughs> and you're like, "Oh my god, I thought you were Lumiere," and he's like, "No, I'm oh, a wrestler," man. and then he becomes. A wrestler and just pounds you. Yep. Whoa. Okay. This is like, what? Okay. Back to the story. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, my mom has this like nightly ritual that she would do. And where basically like, she would be the last person awake. 
and or the last person like out and about and so she would walk through the house and make sure like check on every single kid that was there so she would start with me then go to my sister then go to my brother on her way back to the living room she would turn off the kit like the all the like outside lights make sure all the lights were off in the kitchen except for there was one that we kept on like over our stove just as like a night light to where if anybody walked through they could see it they could see things okay and so um she did that nightly, nightly ritual checked on all of us make sure we were all good and so she um would also like lock the doors and everything and then she would go to bed and so for her to like wake up to one of us scre like screaming mama that's like very jarring because she checks on all of us before she goes to bed so she like and this would have been like right after she dozed off she would wake up in here like mama like really loud and so every, she said when she woke up, she couldn't tell which child it was, but she just knew it was one of hers. And so she would immediately go in the same order, like to me, like from youngest to oldest to me, to my sister, to my brother, but all of us would be sound asleep. And then so she would go back and lay back down. And for the first little, first few nights, it was just that, like she would wake up to that and then go back to sleep. But then she started hearing whenever she would go lay back down and she would doze off again, she'd hear it happen again, but in a different voice. So it would sound like it was a different one of the kids doing it. No. Uh -uh. And so she started to get kind of wigged out, but she still wasn't like fully accepting what was happening. This next thing that happened was whenever I saw the hooded figure again. And so I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I heard whispers in a different language in my hallway. And if you remember from the sleep paralysis episode we did, um, anytime I saw the black hooded figure or the black cloaked figure, uh, he always spoke in a different language. And so I heard these very like hissed whispers coming from the hallway. And um, whenever, do you remember the what I quoted that the black hooded figure said in my sleep paralysis dream? And you were like, no, that's some Harry Potter shit right there. Yeah. Oh my God. What okay. was it? I remember I saying that. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's so, already, cause I was about to say that shit again. Is that awful? Oh my God. <laughs> Deja vu. Okay, so, continue. I know. So basically, though, the like those black hooded figures were saying things that sounded similar to that same chant, the one said in my ear, like in my sleep paralysis episode. And whenever I looked, these were like giant black hooded figures. I mean, they were so tall; their heads came just under like the top of the wood, uh, like door pane. Jeez. And it was just very. And they were like walking in unison, and they looked like they had chains around their like hands and feet like the way they were walking but there weren't any chains they were just kind of like swaying back and forth as they walked and they were whispering to each other in this different language and it was like overlapping whispers and they continued down the hall like towards my sister's room and i very distinctly remember i told my mom about it the next day because my mom started to kind of have like she was like okay something's up like something's going on like i don't know if my kids are just pulling a prank on me because they want me to believe them but she said that she even said then she was like i jumped to that conclusion Conclusion, but I literally started going into y'all's room and like touching you to see how your breathing was. And every single time it was like sound sleep breathing. And she was like, so I knew you weren't awake. She was like, like, and her thing was like a mother knows, like a mother knows, you know? And so um, I saw these two black hooded figures walking in the hallway and I was freaked the fuck out. I was a kid. Like I had to have either still been five or just turned six at this point. And so I just like hid under the covers as a kid does and went back to sleep. And so the next day I told my mom and my sister, my mom was a little freaked out. And she was like, that's really weird. Like, did, you know, she, her thing was like, did you pray? And I was like, well, yeah, but I was scared. Like, you know, like that'll, that'll do anything. And my sister was like upset. She was like, why didn't you come wake me up? She was like, if they were walking toward my room, like they could have hurt me or they could have done something to me. And I was like, I was scared. I was like a little, you know what I'm saying? And so anyways, but then here is like, things really start to escalate at this point. And so the next big thing that happens is my mom is doing her nightly ritual and she's walking through the house with her candelabra. I'm just kidding, not really. And um, Lumiere is walking with her singing the whole way. <laughs> and so basically she walks to my room, checks on me, walks to my sister's room, checks on me, I mean, checks on her, walks back to my brother's room. And as she's walking back through the living room to go turn off the outside light, she sees a little boy sitting on her swing set, staring no, directly through the no, window at her. No, no, And so because she no. had like one of the big front porch swings, and so he's like staring at her swinging back and forth, like on the swing. And 
she like screams and of course all three of us just like shoot up in bed and like all in unison i'm telling you like weird shit like and i say in unison because i'm telling you the way we ran out of our rooms like there's no way we were not in sync because like it literally me and my sister walked in the hallway looked at each other and then as we were walking into the living room is when our brother was meeting us there like it was literally like we were in sync because we just like knew something was up like that's not that there's a lot of creepy shit like i said my family's very haunted and like i'm gonna go through some of the other weird shit after the story that's just like haunt followed me and my family for our entire lives but um they're like me and my brother specifically have always had that weird connection where like we did things in sync like there was an instance that i won't get into because honestly that one's way too far outlandish and i'm already throwing a lot of stuff at our listeners today <laughs> so but there was an instance where i was outside one night in our new house where like my mom lives now and i was going to lock up our chickens because we had a little farm and i got the shit scared out of me by something out there and my brother heard my scream from the inside of, like from the house and literally he said that it was like something took over him and he just went into a trance and he grabbed his gun and like came outside and didn't even know what he was coming outside for. He just said it was like something took over him and like a six cent kicked in and he just like grabbed the gun and walked outside. Like my family and I. Which we might have to talk about that on another episode because me and my brother also have this, this very weird. Really? Yeah. Ugh. No, no, no. We do. It's like one time I was like, we'll minimize it a little bit here. But one time I was like sobbing at my other brother's house, like my half brother's mm -hmm. house. And I was, like, crying because I got yelled at for something. I don't even remember what it was now. But all of a sudden, I get a phone call. And my brother's like, are you crying right now? Mm -hmm. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the ugly, like, <laughs> crying <laughs> answer. And I swear to God, my brother was like, Gabby, like, this is so weird. Like, how did I know this? Like, it, it, we have weird things like that, too, where it's like, yeah there's like a whole nother level of communication happening that we have no idea. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, definitely. I get 100%. it. I get Sibling it. Sibling telepathy. It's crazy. Yeah. But it's only me and him. Like my baby really? brother, me and my baby brother, like nothing. Me and my half brother, nothing. Yeah. But just see, that's it. It's just for me, it's just me and my brother and sister that I grew up with because I have other, I have three other siblings that are also half siblings that are my dad's side mm -hmm. that we don't really like, we have weird stuff that aligns, but we don't have that weird telepathic connection. And then I have adopted siblings that I don't really have that with. Like, so it's, it's something about me and my two half siblings that I like grew up with that like, there's just something that like, which I wonder what this, like the thing is behind that, because like, yeah, I literally have lived with all four of my brothers in one house but yeah. the only person i have that with is my middle brother yeah you know what's also weird is that another like level of that is that my sister has grand mal seizures and from like a medication she was on when she was a kid like having really long lasting effects on her and after she started having them um, everyone knew that I was the person that could bring her out of it the quickest. And every time people would ask, like, how, like, what is it that you're doing? All I would tell them is, like, I'm just looking into her eyes. Like, I just, and, like, because I was really young when she started having them. And so I didn't know how to explain it. But I was, like, I would just look into her eyes and find her. And they were, like, what? And I was, like, I just look into her eyes until I find her. And then Which she, like, comes back out. that's even scarier because this is the same brother that I have this weird thing with had a seizure in front of me yeah Bro. i swear oh my god this is so creepy sam <laughs> literally like that that memory is like sewn into my soul i was so scared for them but like i thought we were like we were playing around because we were sleeping on the couches because we were having a sleepover because that's what we did and we were just like messing around like making faces and like Meh, like at each other and then all of a sudden he starts having a seizure and i'm just thinking this man is fully not man he's a he's child. committed he's he, committed <laughs> yeah i was like i was like oh my god so and so stop it so and so stop i swear to god and all of a sudden my mom's like what's going on with so and so and she's like starts screaming and i swear to god i froze i literally froze and i was like i don't know what to do i don't know what to do i have anxiety so then i'm having like full-blown attacks like yeah. they go to the hospital and then he's fine that is something really also creepy because the first time my sister ever had a seizure is when she, my brother, and my mom Stop. were all 
hanging out in the living room and they were all making goofy faces at each other stop. and she started i swear oh my to god, god stop. like stop. if i brought her in here because she's here right now if i brought her in here and asked her about the first time she would tell you she was sitting there talking to them they were cutting up they were acting goofy they were like making different voices and she was oh my holding god, that's her daughter literally what we were doing yeah and she said there was a point where she literally was just like acting goofy and she said she started to feel like she was like jumping out of her own skin and she was just like that's really weird and she like started laughing and then all of a sudden blacked out and that was when the seizure happened are we twin flames? <laughs> oh my We're god! <laughs> that is literally so traumatizing, uh, and we got very much off key. But that's that, okay. It's so We're creepy. gonna have to it's talk. About, we're gonna have to yeah, talk about something. like that way more in detail on a different episode. That is so crazy. Yeah. So back on the story. <laughs> so basically, we all run into the living room in sync, and we all look at each other, and we see my mom has like went outside, and we see her swing like whipping back and forth really crazy. So we run outside, and we're like, "What is it?" And she's like, "I saw him. I saw the little boy. I ran out here. He's gone, but he was sitting on my swing." Well, right about that time, we look over, and he sticks his head up from the other side of the shrubbery that's just off the porch. <laughs> And so my brother runs and, like, jumps over the shrubs. And my sister, and like, I, like, started to run. And my sister grabs me and is like, no, stop. Like, I'm just like, I don't even know what's happening. Like, I'm just reacting to my brother reacting at this point. And so my mom and my sister and I, like, are in the front yard watching this happen. And my brother tackles this little boy. And literally the little boy turns over, like, all weird. And, like, I'm telling you, it looks so inhuman. Because my brother tackles him from behind in the side yard. And the little boy somehow manages to whip his, like, top, the top of his body around and then puts his feet underneath my brother. Like, it literally would have broken someone's spine. And then he just, like, kicks my brother. And my brother, I'm not even, like, I'm not being dramatic. This is not a little kid memory. Like, we've talked about this so many different times. My brother, like, flies backward off of him and slides on the ground. And the little boy stands up and disappears. And what the fuck? we like, we all run over to my brother and my brother is gasping for air, can't breathe. And so we stand him up and help him breathe. And there is a footprint on his chest that is like, it covers all the way from the, like the bottom of his like peck to the top, like up near the collarbone. And then there's no way it was a little boy's footprint. No way. But I mean, it was like a huge, like his skin was blood red where he got kicked. So my mom believed us after that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> my god guess that who still didn't scary. believe us your dad my dad so anyways where was he so, during all of that sound asleep uh. sound asleep <laughs> literally i think when we walked back inside if i remember correctly he was coming out of the bedroom then going what's going on Oh and then gosh. we explained to him and showed my showed him the brother or like the footprint on my brother's chest and he was still like y'all just y'all make y'all stop this y'all stop and like went back to sleep yeah Stop. yeah <sighs> yeah he he was you know r.i.p dad <laughs> oh my gosh um so yeah um triggered yeah let's see oh okay i did skip a part so this was a part that i skipped that happened right before this incident with my mom just realized this but it's not really important so like the main chronology of the story so it's okay that i'm inserting it here but basically we went on vacation before this incident happened with the little boy and my mom and um when we went on vacation we had a family friend come with us and then it was me my dad a family friend and my mom and or me my dad my mom my family friend and my brother and sister and we went to disney and so um while we were there, we had another family friend that was closer to, like, my brother and sister's age. He was a little bit older, but he was, like, we had known him for a long time. He went and watched over the house for us, and he didn't believe in ghosts, and we tried to explain to him everything that had been happening. And this is also the point where my mom was hearing the little kids screaming at night and everything. Mm -hmm. So she was like, I don't really know what's going on, but I have experienced this. And so he's like, I'm not, I don't believe in ghosts. I'm not scared of no ghosts, blah, 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 blah. Right. And so he's um, in, I think he stayed in my mom and dad's room. Like he just slept in their bed. And because like I said, we were all close family friends. So it wasn't weird. And so he was in there like watching TV or no, he was in the living room. I remember this now. He was in the living room and he was watching TV. And all of a sudden he hears a door like slam in the hallway. And he's like, what in the world? And so he gets up and goes and looks and he finds my sister's bedroom door slammed. And so he like opens it back up. And he goes back into the living room and he's watching TV again. He hears a door slam again. So he gets back up, goes in the hallway. This time it's like my bedroom door, not my sister's. 
Oh. And so he's like, what the hell? And so he opens it back up. He goes back and sits back in the living room. Happens again. Goes into my mom's room. So this time, he just leaves the door slammed. And he's like, all right, fine. It's just shut. It's going to stay shut. So he goes back in there. And this time, it doesn't happen for a little bit. But then he said he hears another door slam, too. And so he gets up and sees that it was either me, mine or my sister. So he's like, okay, fine. So he goes to every door in the house and shuts them. And is like, a draft is closing these doors. So I'm just going to shut all of them. So they won't, won't happen again. Right. So he goes back. He sits down. And he says that this time, it did not take very long at all after he sat down. He heard every door in the house open creak at the same time and then slam all at the same time what mm -hmm. and he said that that was like the moment that he started believing in ghosts and so he went because he knew that it couldn't be somebody messing with him he knew there was no way a draft caused that to happen so he goes and he went to my mom and dad's room and he said he just like laid under the blankets and called his girlfriend and made her stay on the phone with him until the sun came up and then he went to sleep oh my gosh yeah, and so he told us whenever he got back from when we got back from vacation, he would never do this, stay there again without us there. And so, and it took him a while to come back to. He does come back into the play later, like some other stuff happened with him later, but he did not come back for a while. And so now back, then the thing with my mom and the little boy happens. Then um, this is where something that started happening here has happened to my family several times since this incident and i'll talk about it after the story is over with so basically at this point we start hearing when we get back from vacation we start hearing my dad um he wore these like house slippers and he drug his feet really bad annoying so you would hear like a ch -ch 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 on the carpet and he he had this like thing that he would do like, in the middle of the night he would get thirsty so he would just get up walk down the hallway drag his feet the whole way go into the kitchen get a cup of a glass of water drink it put it in the sink and then go back to bed mm -hmm. and so one night my mom and my sister are sitting in the living room my mom's back is turned to the kitchen because of, like the chair she was, she was sitting in and they were watching tv and my dad had already went to sleep and they hear him him get up and come down the hallway and my mom whenever he gets behind her chair um she's like you know my dad's name was larry she was like larry what are you doing awake like what are you doing up so late you know and so he stops behind her chair and just doesn't say anything and my sister's just like looking behind my mom's chair and like looks freaked out and my mom's like what is it and she my sister just shakes her head and my mom is like what and she just shakes her head and so my dad continues walking and goes into the kitchen and my mom sit, like turns around in the chair to hear like the sink going and everything. And there's nobody in the kitchen. And she said that she heard a glass sit down and heard the slippers walk all the way back behind her, her looking, there was nobody there. The glass, like he walked all the way back behind her back into her, their room. And she got up and went in the kitchen. And when she did, she said there was a glass sitting in the sink the same way he always did. And my dad was alive at this time. Like, my dad was still living, like, he had not passed yet, so this was just a spirit that was mimicking him. The next thing after that is okay. that um, things that were sat on our island bar in the kitchen would, like, fling off randomly. So we would sit things, like, in the center, like, you know, decorative things, or, like, my dad, for some reason, always put his medication on the island bar, so just take it into his bathroom and put it in, their in his medicine cabinet, but whatever. So he would always sit it there, and so things just started flying off randomly. Like, something was just, like, fucking with us, and, like, we would either be in there or not, and it would just fly off. And so this is where that family friend comes back into play, the one that house sat for us. And so he was there hanging out with my sister it was the first time they had hung out together in a while and they were just like one thing in my family that we love to do is just play cards we had so many card games we would play we loved playing cards and so they were just playing cards some type of card game that only took two people and all of a sudden they heard something slide across the island bar and it like flung off and like you know went in the like like flung off into the kitchen and so the thing about this like family friend he was older than us like significantly and i don't mean like he was like i mean he was an adult and we were all kids but he was like when i say adult i mean he was probably like 18 so like and we had known him for a very long time we knew his girlfriend really well we we're all family friends and my sister hopefully she doesn't, she doesn't get mad at me for saying this she had like a little school girl crush on him and so she was probably 13 14 at the time he was 18 and so um but they, we were all just friends. So it wasn't like anything weird. And they actually ended up dating for a little while, like way later in life after they were both like in their 20s. But like at that point in time, it was very innocent. Schoolgirl crush. He was a family friend, whatever. And so, but that's just important to know for the specific story. And so um, whenever it flings across the counter, he gets freaked out, of course. And she's like, oh no, that's normal. So she starts to to, trying to play like tough to like impress him. And she has a boyfriend at this time that is her age, but it's not like, 
like please understand like this was just a schoolgirl crush like you know what i'm saying like it was a little like it wasn't like she was wanting to cheat on her boyfriend with him it wasn't like he was wanting her or anything like that at this point in time it was very innocent like just how like when you're young like a 12 or 13 year old you like have a boyfriend or have a girlfriend but there's someone older than you that you also have a crush on but you would never realize it was a real crush until one day you're older reflecting on it you know so but she was trying to like play big and bad for him play tough and i was like oh no it's nothing and she like goes and picks it up and puts it back on the counter well as she's like walking back to where they were sitting in the living room it happens again and so she stops and she goes and puts it back on the counter and that doesn't really that never really happened like we didn't sit there and like it wouldn't be a repeated cycle if we put it back up there it would stay there and so but i think because he was freaked out it was like playing on that and so from there um she just started making the game basically and was like see it's so funny like it's not a big deal blah 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 ha 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 whatever and so he, she just keeps putting stuff on there and he's getting freaked out and he's like jenna stop that's my sister's name he's like jenna stop like it's not funny anymore like please just like let's not do this like i'm freaked out like i don't like this so basically she just starts putting more random things on the island bar to just taunt the spirit and it starts flinging shit off the counters and so all of a sudden it gets very irritated and everything flip like flings off or i'm assuming it was irritated flings off the counter at one time and then everything like they said that they heard a clatter happen like ripple effect like dominoes all the way through all of the cabinets in the kitchen and she was like what in the world and so she goes and looks at all of the like like the open like the like she opens all the cabinets and looks inside and she said every single thing that was standing up straight was now on its side pointing toward my brother's room mm. and she like then gets freaked out and she starts just trying to fix everything and so he comes over and starts trying to help fix everything too and one of the medicine bags that had flung off the counter i don't know how i don't know why like i don't i like i like I don't know if it was like one of those weird cinematic moments in a scary movie where a wind picks up in the house and starts flinging stuff around. I don't know. They didn't really talk about it too much because they were freaked out. But one of the medicine bags that had like a small pack, like small pill in it or a small like medication in it to where it was like a lot of paper flings up and sticks to the dude's face, like our family friend's face and like covers his face and nose. And he like can't breathe because it's like literally covering his face. And so she's like trying to help him and is like pulling it off and they finally get it off and they just leave everything and go like they like just go back to her room. But it was still just like very creepy. So this is the biggest, like scariest thing that happened to me in this house. Okay. Are you serious? It's, we're we're yes. still getting scarier? <laughs> oh yeah, it continues to get scarier until the very end. Oh my so gosh. um this is the scariest thing that happened to me though. Like I didn't need a personal account. I didn't need them to tell me this. Like this was first person I experienced this. So um, we had an old barn that was outside of like our house, like way back toward the woods. And um, we had chickens out there and they were just kind of free range chickens because they were so far away from the road and far away from the neighbors that nothing like we didn't have to worry about them running off or anything, getting them. And they went and like to roost in the barn. So they would like go up into the top part of the barn and roost up there and like lay eggs and stuff like that. So they were safe. And so there was a really big storm that had happened. I want to say it was a tornado season and we were fine. And so um, after I was walking out there and I did the same path every single day and being a little country boy, like I walk around with my shoes off all the time, like right. it was no big deal. And so I did, I was walking through my same path, going to climb up the ladder to get to the top part of the barn. And when I stepped in a certain spot, something poked me in the bottom of my foot and it kind of hurt and I fell down and I wasn't bleeding or anything like that. It just kind of shocked me. And I was like, ah, you know, and so I look and I see this little blue point, like little like dark navy blue point sticking out of the dirt. So I start digging to try and pull it up and I finally get it up and it's a toy spaceship. And it's like navy blue on the top, red on the bottom. And it looked really cool. I mean, it was just like a really cool like spaceship. And yeah. so I um and like I think it's super like super cool. I go ahead and finish up like taking care of the chickens and everything, and I take it back inside and I take it to my bathroom and I start washing it off. And like I didn't say anything to my mom, and then there was nothing weird going on. Like I mean, I, like I didn't. Well, it's a like at this point, yeah, it was just a little toy spaceship. But my mom like starts like walking through the house really frantically, and I can hear her, and I'm like, I don't really know what's going on, but I'm like, whatever. And so then she walks into my bathroom and looks at me, and she's like, What are you doing? And I was like, I found this like toy spaceship. And she was like, where did you find that? And I was like, out in the barn, like it was buried. And I guess like, you know, the rain washed it up. And so she just like looked at me really weird. And she looked like alarmed. And she just was like, be careful. And I was like, yes, ma'am. And she was like, 
okay, and just like walked off. But she told me later that she just had this really weird feeling and something told her to go check on me. And the reason she was walking through the house is because she heard, like she knew I was outside taking care of the chickens. So she went out there, but when she looked at the barn, she didn't see me. And so she was kind of starting to freak out because she had something to tell her, just go check on me. And so after I washed off this like spaceship, I'm playing with it all fucking day. I'm like running through the house, like playing with it and everything. And the thing with it is that there were these little buttons on it that would make these like sounds. And they would sound like little spacemen, like making like commands, like, you know, Houston, blah, 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 you know, like whatever. And it was just like automated stuff. And I would press them and they worked. And so I was just playing with it. But literally all day that day, my mom was just like staring at me so weird, like just cutting me weird looks every time I'd like enter a room with it. But I just didn't think anything of it. I was just like, I don't like I honestly, little kid me was like, oh, gosh, I'm in trouble because I brought this dirty spaceship inside and washed it off. You know, like, that's what my brain was telling me as a little kid. I I thought I was in trouble because I made a mess. And so, um, at the end of the night, like at the end of the day, I had this like toy box that I would always put all my toys in. And so I put the spaceship like on the top of the toy box because it was always like a hierarchy, little OCD me. I would put the toys that I like to play with the most at the top. And then like the ones that I didn't play with a lot at the bottom. That way I could get to the ones I like to play with the most, like very easily. And so um, I went to sleep and this was the point where I was like a really responsible kid. And so by the time I was like seven, um, I started waking myself up for school. So I would like have a little alarm clock that would go off and I would like go get in the shower and stuff like that. And like, you know, get rid of like, go get ready for the day. And then my mom would come like a little bit after and check on me and like, you know, walk me outside to the bus. And so um, the, I was asleep and in the middle of the night at 3.30 a.m., mm I hear this really loud siren going off in my room. And I'm like, what in the world? And I can't like sit up and I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And I realize, like, I recognize the sound as one of the buttons on this to- on the toy oh, spaceship. Oh, I don't like where this is going. <sighs> yeah. So I run across the room and I start, like, I reach for the toy spaceship. It's not on top of the toy box. It's somewhere in the toy box, but it's not on top of it. So I start pulling all the toys out, trying to get to it. And I finally get to it on the bottom. And I hear my mom across the lawn. She goes, boo-boo, because that's my like family nickname. She goes, boo-boo, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. Like, it just went off by itself. I wasn't even playing with it. I was asleep. And she was like, well, turn it off. And I was like, I'm trying. And so I start pressing all the buttons and trying to turn it off. And she goes, turn it off in the same exact like like re- repetitive way she just said it. And I was like, I promise I'm trying, like, I'm not mean to do it. Well, then all of a sudden, her voice drops, like, five octaves, and she no. goes, turn it off. Yeah. No. And so, um, I immediately am, like, I, I recognize, like, something's up. Something's not right. I don't know what's happening. And so, I, um start like trying to mess with the buttons and I hear her getting closer and closer to her door. Keep remember her door was right across the hall from mine and I hear her and she just keeps going, turn it off, turn it off. Like getting louder and meaner and like more angry. And I hear her right in her doorway. And when I look up, the shadow was casting just perfectly to where I couldn't see anything above her knees, but it did not look like her. It was like this gray mangled veiny legs And they were just standing there in the doorway. And I could kind of see the silhouette of my mom. But it was like not like I couldn't fully see her. And she said, turn it off. And so I popped the bat like the back off where the batteries were in the thing. There were no fucking batteries inside. Stop. And it's still just like going crazy. And so I screamed and like, I'm crying. And I said, just stop it and like slammed it down. And when I did, it stopped. And I looked up and my mom wasn't there. And so I just kind of like sat in the floor for a little bit and just like breathed. And then I got up and walked across the hall. My mom was sound asleep in her bed. No, no. Yep. And so the next day. No, there's more. (laughs) Well, no, the next day, whenever I woke up, all my toys were still scattered across the room. So I knew it wasn't a dream. It was sitting there because right after that, I went back and lay back in my bed and I covered up and just tried to go to sleep. Next day, I took that spaceship back out to the barn and buried it. (laughs) <laughs> I would have too. Moved out, the family Shoot. like 
Yeah, the um after we moved out, the family that lived there after us like demolitioned it. So they just like completely tore the barn down. I was like, good, nobody's finding that damn spaceship. Yeah. So then now we're getting close to the end. We're wrapping up here. So I'm um, terrified. Jesus. After this happened, the next thing that happened was my brother's best friend, which was also my sister's boyfriend, was staying the night with my brother, and my brother had bunk beds in his room. And so um they were like, you know. They stayed up really late, as, like, teenage boys did whenever they would stay the night at each other's house. I'm sure teenage girls did the same thing. Yeah. And teenage anything in between. We do not discriminate. We normalize pronouns. So all the they, thems, as Correct. teenagers, I'm sure, also stayed up pretty late. And so just teenagers in general. And so they um, were going to sleep finally. And my brother said he was on the bottom bunk. His best friend slash sister's boyfriend was on the top bunk. Also, both their names are Jason. I always thought that was really weird. Wait, so that's like, so weird. Yeah. And so, but anyways, um, so they, um, my brother was laying down on the bottom bunk. The other Jason was on the top bunk. And uh, um, my brother said that he, every time he would go to doze off, he'd hear what sounded like like wood creaking. And he'd like kind of look around and he wouldn't see anything. And he's like, I don't like, he would think maybe like the other Jason was like walking in the room or something like to go to the bathroom, but he would look up and no, nobody would be there. Nothing would be happening. And so he um, said that he finally, like it happened one point and he heard Jason, the other Jason, like on the top bunk gasp. And my brother said, what is it? And the other Jason like leaned over to the crack between the bed and the wall and was like on top of your desk, on top of your desk. And my brother was like, what? And so basically there was like this weird, like, it was kind of like a China cabinet looking desk where there was like a desk platform, but then there was like shelving up above it, like where right. when you're sitting down, you could like store books and stuff like that. And there was a top part that had these like two overlapping pieces of wood on the edge that created like another like safeguard for a shelf where you could like put books on the very top of it if you wanted to. And then it like had an open top. So it didn't really matter how tall, whatever it was you put up there. And so he leans out from under the bed or like from the bottom bunk um, and looks up there. And he said that he saw these like two hands like grasping the side of the wood where he would have put books. And he said that he saw like these two eyes peek over at him that were just like this glowing red. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever he looked like he saw that it was laid out across the top of his desk and its feet were pressed against the other side of the wood and it would stretch out. And when it did, it would like pull, like push against the like desk. So that it was kind of pulling apart. And that's what the creaking sound was. And when he saw that he and Jason both just like screamed bloody murder and ran out of the room and didn't sleep in the room. They slept in the living room at that point. Um, so the next thing that happened that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back because my dad finally believed us was one night we were all coming back from church and, um, my dad drove like the church van, which was like to go pick up kids that wanted to go to church, but to have families that didn't go. And so we were on our, we came home from church, we pull into the front yard and as the lights hit the top of the, like from the car hits the top of the barn, the little boy standing up in the like doorway no. of the barn, like the top part looking down at us. To tell you how the barn is set up, like I said, like the chickens would go up into the top part and they'd roost there and they'd lay there. Well, this little boy was up there and there was no way to get down except for the one entrance that had a ladder to go up in there that I took every single day. There was no other way to get up there. No other way to get down unless you jump down from the front part, but nobody could do that. I'm sure he could because he was obviously not human, but you know. I mean so, facts, but like what the heck? Yeah. And so basically he goes, Oh my God, did y'all see that? And so my brother and sister and Jason, the other Jason was with us too. They look out there and they see him standing at the top of the barn. And my mom was like, go get him. Why she volunteered my like siblings to go get him. I don't know. But they all run out of the van and like start chasing, like going after this little boy that was sitting at the top of the barn and he doesn't react. He's just sitting there watching them. And I like watch, I see it happening. And so this was like the first time that I ever saw a little boy very clearly, because even the night where, you know, the swing incident happened with my mom, it was just so much of a blur and he disappeared, but I could see him like so clearly standing up in the top of the barn. And so he, so my brother, the other Jason and my sister are all running. My sister's falling way behind because she's not as fast as them, but they're just, I mean, running as fast as they can. And right as my sister, who was the last one in the line, runs under the like entrance to get into the barn. I also try to run after them too, but my mom was like, no. And she's like pulling me inside, but I'm trying to watch the whole time because I want to see what's happening. But as my sister finally makes it inside, which means my brother and the other Jason would have already been coming up the ladder. The little boy turns around and walks back into the barn, like the upstairs part, and they don't find him. 
What? No. So my dad believes us after that. And so we had a bunch of elders from the church come over and pray over the house. And they all seemed really disturbed by whatever happened, but they never shared with us what happened. I'm sure I think they shared with my dad, but my mom just like didn't want to know. And like none of the kids knew what happened. But after that, we didn't have anything. Everything felt fine. Everything felt okay. But there was one night where my mom was really sick. Like, wait, wait. So you're telling me that all of your church, like elder members came over and prayed on the house. Yeah. And they wouldn't tell us what happened. I'm sure they told my dad because my dad's the person who got them to do it. But like, not like they wouldn't tell us what happened. And so, and I don't think my mom wanted to know. And anyhow, I've asked her since then, like what happened? She was like, as far as I know, they just came, they prayed and everything was fine. Like, and she was like, but they all seemed, yeah. And they all seemed so sketched out and like, you just weirded out after that. And so, and they would not talk about it. Like I tried asking in the future because I didn't even know who all it was, but anytime I would mention it, they just like acted really weird about it. And we didn't go to that church much longer after that, because like we ended up moving to a place where there was a church that was closer that we liked, but um, they just were like really weird about it. And so there was one night that my mom was sick. It was a Sunday night. And so she stayed home from church and my dad and all of us went and like, keep in mind, my dad drove the church van. So we were gone for a very long time. And my mom was just like really sick, did not feel well at all. And she had been sick for like days at this point. And so she went to take a bath to see if that would like help her out, like just taking a hot bath and soaking in the bath and everything. And she was laying down and she heard like, it sounded like, she said she didn't hear the front door open or close, but it sounded like someone had just walked into the house like they had gotten home. And she was like, wow, like Larry, which is my dad, is back really early. And so as he's walking down the hallway and enters into the bedroom, she sees him enter and she goes, Larry, what are you doing back so early? And then like the way the doors were to the bathroom, to her, like her master bathroom, bathroom was inside of her master bedroom. So to enter the bedroom, which was like right across, the door was right across from my hall, immediately to the right was the bathroom door. So you just like did one quick swoop in and you were in the bathroom. And so she said she saw him enter and then he turned into the bathroom and she realized it wasn't my dad. And she said this was the first time that she saw like the actual like entity or whatever it was very clearly. And I did not know this until the other day when I was getting her to recant this with me. But do you know how she described what he looked like? No, no, I don't want to talk. No, no. She saw a figure that was about seven foot tall in a black cloak with a hood over its head. Shut up. No way. And she like, I did not know this like until the other day. And I was like, are you effing serious? Like what? And she said that this figure just like walked into the bathroom and was started toward her. And she said, and she wears glasses. So she, everything was very blurry, but she saw like the black hood, the black cloak, like just walking toward her. And she just like said that she just kind of closed her eyes and prayed. And she said, God, if it's my time, take me, don't let me suffer. You know, like, don't let this thing hurt me. And she said when she did, she heard this, like, loud. She said it just sounded like a roar. And when she opened her eyes, she saw this bright light, like, just shine down from the ceiling. And a figure in a white cloak came out that was even taller than the black cloak and hit the, like, figure in the black cloak. And she said that the, like, words that he said were, because she always described it, like, Let me explain the reason why I didn't know that this is what it looked like is because she's Pentecostal. She always described it as an angel and a demon. She always just said there was a demon and an angel. She never described what it looked like to me. So I was walking her through the story and like kind of giving her the chronology of everything in a very summarized version just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And I told her that I was going to talk about other things too, like the black cloak figure that I like had seen a lot when I was younger. And she looked at me and she was like, I completely forgot about that. And I was like, yeah, I was like, you remember, like, I saw it twice in the house. I saw it once in a nightmare when I was younger. I was like, I saw it two times after that whenever I was older, too. And, you know, and she was like, well, she was like, I never, like, told you this, but the, like, figure that I saw was a black cloaked figure. And she said that the one that came out of the light and hit the black one was a white cloaked figure. And she said that in, like, she quoted, she was like, I don't know why it worded it this way and why that was so weird to me and why it stood out to me. She said, but the white cloaked figure said, you will not bother her while she's in the bath. And the black cloaked figure just, like, turned and walked out the door and disappeared. And we did not see anything after that. But the white cloaked figure, she said, didn't even, like, reverence her presence, didn't look at her, didn't do anything, and just literally showed up just to do that and then went whoop and disappeared again. 
and we saw nothing like nothing happened after that my mom got better she was no longer sick and then it was literally just like within the next week we got a call from the house owner because we were only renting the house and she said hey someone made me an offer on the house so you guys have 30 days to get out Mm. and we moved out and we found a new house like very quickly is the house that we like she lives in now and um the family that moved in there said that they have not had any instances since then like they have not had any because i asked because i went to school with their grandson and i was like, you guys didn't have anything happen and he was like uh uh-uh. and i was like wow okay that is like so, yeah. honestly terrifying like i don't even mm. know i wouldn't have survived that long <laughs> <laughs> like, like i would have get... left immediately correct like i get scared of like someone yeah. breathing like <laughs> well, I do have two small things just to add that like kind of bounce off of this whole story because it intertwines my whole family. So the first thing after that is that it's mimicking spirits. There are spirits that mimic me and my family and have since we were very, very young, but or since like I was very young, but it's only me, my dad and my mom. So it's like not anyone else in my family. It's just us three. And um, the instances where this happened was like with my dad's slipper, like I told you in the like yellow house. Um, there was a point where this was what was also really creepy. Oh, also the instance with my mom where the spirit pretended to be my mom whenever the spaceship thing happened. And then the next time that this happened was earlier this year. My mom was in the hospital with COVID and she like was not doing well. We did not think she was going to make it. And I was at her house, like taking care of things, just watching to things, watching over the house, making sure everything stayed in order. And I was outside in the front yard talking on the phone with a friend and the, where my car was parked, I could see directly through the window at my mom, like into my mom's room. And I saw my mom, even though my mom was at the hospital, I saw my mom come into the room, sit down in her recliner and start rocking back and forth. Like she was talking to somebody and my mom was not there. She was at the hospital and she, um, and I watched this happen for a good, like 10, 15 minutes until I finally told my friend I had to go and go see who that was. And when I walked in there, nobody was there. My sister, my other sister was in the room asleep on my mom's bed, but that was across the room. And this was my mom. Like I saw my mom walk into the room and do the, like sit there. And the thing is that there was also a lot of weird, like energy going on in her house anyways, before that. And I like clean, cleaned it, cleansed it, I, like smudged it and everything. And right. like did a little cleansing ritual on it. But, um, it was just very like it was very strange and then the final time that this happened was that whenever i was in clanton seeing my mom and dropping off some stuff i wanted to store here before i went up to charlotte to work on that movie that i was on um i wa- so i left like really late at night because i like to drive at night like that's just how i am like i i prefer driving at night it's a lot more calming to me traffic is not as bad i left probably around like 10 p.m. alabama time and so um my mom i told her bye she takes medicine at night to like help her like she it like helps her sleep and it also she has a tons of medication that she has to take for tons of health issues like she has a lot of chronic pain problems so it just helps her go to sleep without having to deal with pain at night and so she took her medicine like right as i was getting ready to leave that way by the time i left it would kick in and so i get to like clanton in the town like in like in like i guess the city area because we live like right on the outskirts of clanton and so um i'm filling up my car with gas and i get a phone call from my mom and i'm like that's really weird like i literally just left probably like 10 minutes ago 10 15 minutes ago and so i answer and she's like where are you and i was like i'm i'm getting gas i'm about to hit the road and she was like so you weren't just here and i was like no i wasn't and she was like Ooh, I swear she was like I was asleep and I heard someone walking around the living room and come into my bedroom and Stop. I said boo boo is that no. you yep. and I said boo boo is that you and she said in clear as day it was your voice and you said yeah mom that's me come here and so she said that she assumed something was like happening outside with like something was getting after the chickens and so she sits up and like she looks over and she said that very blurry because remember she keeps she wears glasses her glasses are like her eye vision is a lot worse now than what it was whenever you know that happened in the incident with the yellow house because she's older and so she very blurrily sees me over at the door and sees me walk out but i still call over like my shoulder to her in the room saying like come here hurry up come here And so she reaches over because she gets that weird feeling and she grabs her gun and she walks into the living room and she doesn't see me. And she's like, boo-boo, where are you? Boo-boo, boo-boo, like calling for me and like looking around the living room. She doesn't see me. She looks outside and she keeps searching for me for a little bit. And she finally is just like, she looks outside and doesn't see my truck because I was driving the truck at the time. And she's like, 
he's not even here. And so she called me and she said that she like plain as day saw and heard me telling her to come here. But when she saw me, it just looked like a silhouette of me, but it looked like me. No, but yeah. (laughs) So that was another, that was the final time that like, I say the final time, I'm sure it'll happen more because that literally those two like most recent incidents just happened this year, you know? So, um, I mean, there have been other little things like where whenever I would be in college, I would hear my sister calling my name a lot and keep in mind, like I went to college three hours away from where my sister lived, but I would hear her randomly like call my name and I'd be like, what the hell? And so I would text her just to check on her. I text my mom and be like, what is she, you know, what's she doing? So that was another like instance of like, I guess a spirit mimicking us, but like there wasn't really anything that came from that you know like it was just I hear my sister calling my name you know and so um and that stopped like after my freshman year I didn't hear that anymore but basically though um those two most recent incidences happened this year so I'm sure it will continue to happen more and more throughout my life but that was the most recent one was like you know like before I went to Charlotte and then the final thing that I will just mention is that my family has very specific spirits that follow us so like mine is the figure in the dark cloak but my that glowing eyed figure that my brother saw like in the yellow house um he has seen it several times after that too like he's seen it in this house like that we live in now whenever he and uh, my sister-in-law at the time um were like back in the like apartment ish area um and he's seen it like a couple of times after that too he said he always just sees it looking at him like he'll see it in different places where he'll just see the eyes looking at him and he said sometimes they're green sometimes they're red and sometimes it'll be one red one and one green one that's so like just like crazy to think about yeah and my brother's not spiritual like that at all like he's not like I mean, like he, like, yeah. And he's not even really that religious. He wasn't when we were growing up. Now he goes to church regularly, regularly and things like that, but he still has never been that religious, you know? So it's just really strange that like each of us have like our own, like following spirit, you know, like, it's just really strange. And I don't know if my sister has one. Um, We haven't really talked about it. You know, like she gets weirded out by stuff like that. She's not, she's very open minded and she has a spiritual side to her, but she's still not very spiritual or religious. Um, Yeah. And my mom has that one that like, like that entity that I said was here earlier this year while she was in the hospital that like, it's just really strange that um, it's like a weird tense energy. It's been around her a few times before, but I'm usually able to make it go away, you know? But besides that, like, we've never seen that one or heard that one, you know? It's just, like, there, and you can feel its presence. Yeah, like, with me and my mom, I mean, we have a lot of the light presence Mm -hmm. type spirit things that appear to us. Um, Like, and it's usually in a form of, like, a or like, a big, like, white orb. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can see what you mean on that, which is interesting. Um, but there's also been times with me that we've seen some darker figures, just shadow figures, nothing, um, like super crazy intense, but yeah, I will say it does throw you off your rocker. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm afraid to sleep at night sometimes. Cause I, I just experience this stuff so often as well that yeah, I, I just, you definitely do. I freak out, like, especially, yeah. especially during like traumatic situations, I can't sleep. Yeah, I will say you and I are both people that like spirits come to a lot. Like I remember right after my friend passed earlier this year and you didn't even know what he looked like, knew anything about him. You just knew that I had a loved one pass and like you were doing a tarot card reading for me and you just looked and you were like, Sam, someone's here. And I was like, who? And you described him to me and you literally like described what he looked like, but you described what he looked like when I very first met him. And what's crazy is like, I knew you were telling the truth because like I had posted about him on social media, but all the pictures I posted were him closer to when he passed. And he looked different than what he did in the like description you saw. And you like, you described his tattoos because you couldn't see his tattoos well on social media or anything like that. But he had like these horror movie tattoos and stuff all over his arms. And you described them. You're like, I just see faces, like scary faces all over his arms. And they look like tattoos. And you're like, I don't get bad, bi- bad vibes from them, but they like just look like horror movie, like faces. And I was like, yeah, he literally had like freaking Pennywise on his arm. He had like, I think he had, I think Michael was one of them. Like, it's mm-hmm. just like he had them all over his arm. And you said that you, when you saw him, that he had really short hair and see right before he died, he had long hair. Right. Like, but when I very first met him, he had short hair that like when he put a hat on, it covered all of his hair, just about only a tiny bit came out the bottom. And so like, I was like, I know you, I, you, you know what you're seeing, you know, you know what you're saying. And Which, so that's um, when I feel like I get the most 
activities when I'm in an Oracle reading. Um, really? Yeah. Honestly, that's when I feel like I have the most like, I guess, intense ones. Like there was another uh, friend of mine I was reading. This was way back. This is like mm-hmm. when Gabby was first starting. And yeah. he so pretty much we were doing this reading and they had spirit come up and it was like this young girl with flip-flops on and like short like and i was like explain i was like okay this is gonna sound weird (laughs) but (laughs) um like this is what's happening this is what they look like and he starts sobbing uncontrollably Mm -hmm. and he was like and i and i could be getting this wrong now because it has been a minute but they were like that was like my family friend I grew up with that was murdered. And I was like, well, oh my God. God. yeah, it was crazy. Bro. So, and he always felt really guilty that he wasn't able to attend the funeral because his parents <sighs> wouldn't let him because they were, he was so young. Oh yeah. Goodness. And it was just, it was, it was very intense. And I started crying too. Cause like, that's yeah. like crazy, but like just the, the amount of like spirits and stuff that show up are just insane for me. I just, yeah. I don't get it. I would definitely say that you're like definitely more on like the medium side of things. And I'm not like, I'm not a good medium whatsoever. Like I've had spirits come to me before to try and like share messages with their loved ones. And it's difficult. Like unless they come to me in a dream, it's super hard for me to understand what they're saying. And I like, there was this one time in college that I will not give any, like any detail because just respect for these people. But there was a girl that went to our college that had passed like when I was very younger in college and I was friends with a lot of her friends. And this girl kept coming to me in dreams and was like, talk to my friends. I have things I need to tell them. And I was like, I don't like, that's not, that's not my theme. Like I do tarot card readings. I can give you advice. I can talk about your past, your future. I can do stuff like that. I can help with like spiritual cleansing, spiritual healing. I can go get bad spirits out of a place. You know what I'm saying? Like I can do all that, but talking to spirits for other people is not something I do. It's not a comfort zone of mine. I'm not good at it. And because whenever I try to talk to a spirit, whenever I'm awake, it just sounds like I'm talking to them through water. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, and everything is super delayed. That is always how I explain things to people. I'm like, you have to imagine it's like we're at an aquarium, but the glass yeah. is like five times what it is at an aquarium. Yeah. And like, so you're trying to hear them, delayed. but it's, it's very, like, it's very yeah. hard. And so well, see, to me, it's like, imagine like, instead of being muffled like that, it's like, they sound really far away and the water is making it like super delayed. Like it is muffled, but it's not like too muffled. Too mm-hmm. It's like, it sounds kind of muffled like this, but it's like, real, like I'll ask a question and I may get a response like, I mean, like Ten almost two later. minutes. Yeah, like yeah, it'll like, be like a w- bit after. Ridiculous. And like, it'll just like, I'll just be sitting there listening. And then I've had spirits come up randomly out of nowhere and speak to me plain as day, pl- like plain as day and then disappear. But like, I yeah. remember that girl that I, tr- like there was a girl that I am pretty good friends with. I mean, we haven't really kept in touch much after college, but we're on social media with each other that she was the main one that like, that girl was telling me to like go talk to her and so finally one night I was out for a jog and I just kept like feeling that urge and so I texted her and she was like I literally was about to text you because I've been feeling it too and so I met up with her and I was able to help a little bit and she said that she could feel her presence because like she felt the cold touch you know whenever like you open up and allow like you know and like I was able to answer things for her but there's one point where like I went to ask a question but I didn't ask it and then like I got an answer and I was like I don't know if this answer is for the question I was about to ask and so the girl that was like the alive girl that was the friend was like well what was it and I was like she said this and the girl was like well I don't know because like that's not what I that's not the answer to what I was talking about I was like like I said I don't know I was like I was about to end see it just gets so complicated and convoluted and I never want to be like I can talk to your dead ancestor or your dead family member because like I I mean I don't I don't talk about it like that like I know for me like if a spirit comes forward and I can hear them Mm -hmm. enough I'll relay a message. Otherwise, we're just kind of staring at each other. And I'm just like, what's up? He's doing something weird. Like, I remember you said that with my friend that passed earlier this year. You were like, he's doing something really weird with his hands. And I was like, what? And you're like, he's just talking with his hands a lot. Like, instead of actually saying words, he's like doing stuff with his hands. And I was like, he did talk with his hands some, but like, I don't know if that's because it's hard for him to communicate or like. And I also understand from at least my experience is that a lot of spirits and since they are have they have a hard time with the vocalization of stuff Mm -hmm. they'll do like hand movements like i remember there was one story i heard where they kept like touching their heart 
Mm -hmm. and they were like I think that's what you yeah that's what you were telling you were telling me that he was doing you were like you kept saying that he was like you know like and he kept saying something like smile and you were like okay he just wants you guys like he wants to see you smile again like he wants to see you happy like this hurts him that he had to leave yeah and a lot of people a lot of spirits will literally be like so like in that example it was a little different but like in this story that i was uh i wasn't involved in this at all it was just a secondhand story i've heard from someone but they're Mm -hmm. like the spirit was like my heart my heart like kept going like this in like a jab motion Mm. and they were like okay what what could be wrong with a heart were they hurt with a knife or did they have a heart attack that they have a stroke did they Mm -hmm. you know like they kind of just went through and they were like did he have something wrong with his heart and the person was like oh yeah he like had this blah 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 and i was like oh my god Uh, okay he had a heart okay. transplant or something. It was like yeah, crazy. That's crazy. So I remember one yeah. time you told me that basically um, how you communicate with them is because you're like really good at being like you're an empath and like I'm an empath too, but like I can pick up on energies and stuff like that. And I can tell you like what a spirit is feeling, but I can't really tell you what they're saying. But you said that there was a point where basically you got so good at like the empathy of the energy. You could tell what they were saying based off what they were feeling. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that makes sense. And then like, I follow a couple of mediums on TikTok, like, after like because you told me that back when we were in college before like tiktok really got big and so i follow a couple mediums on tiktok and they said that's the way they communicate with them is that they can't really hear words but it's once you connect with them on an emotional level you feel what they're trying to say and you kind of become like the translator between like the feeling to the words you know yeah and i was like that makes sense like and yeah and and if you do use that technique like which is usually the common one i from what you've said, what I think, but, um, mm-hmm. it's very much like, they're like, Hmm. And you're like, Oh yeah. Anger mean this. And then you start like, and then sometimes you can start connecting like the dots, especially mm-hmm. if they flood memories towards you and things yeah. like that. Oh you yeah. Can... Show you visions and stuff. They do that to me sometimes. That's the best way that the spirit has been able to communicate with me is like that girl that I was talking about that, like she wanted me to tell her friend stuff. She just kept showing me visions of stuff. And like, yeah. there was a point where like the girl that was like her friend that was alive was like, how will I know when she's around? And like the one that had passed showed me a vision of like an owl. But to me, for some reason, my brain didn't go owl. It was like birds. Yeah. And I was like, okay. And I heard her say like the bird, the bird, like with the vision of the owl. And so I told her, I was like, you know, she keeps saying the bird over and over and over again. And I was like, so maybe there's like, when you see a specific type of bird or like a flock of birds or something. And then she was like, like, like what like do you know what kind i was like well i see like an owl right now i was like but it's not a very clear vision she was like okay i have seen an owl so much here recently every single time i feel her presence she was like that's what i was wanting to know is if the owl was her and i was like okay cool all right you know yeah. like you know like all well, right and that's we, another we thing you know, too like, that gets so twisted with people is that they'll be like well you didn't say this exactly so and it's like you think we know exactly what the f- is going on no mm-hmm. we're literally trying to it's like it's like, we're trying our best here. Like, <laughs> like if you're trying I'm not a medium, to, like, right? Like, it's like, okay. The easiest way I can explain it is, I don't know a lick of Chinese or Japanese, yeah. and you're gonna tell me that I'm supposed to understand all of it when I don't understand it at all. Yeah, that's what's going on. Like, it's literally someone going like Kanichiwa, but like not knowing that means hi. Yeah, and you're trying to like figure it out. Yeah. And like, you know, if you were talking to someone who speaks Mandarin and they're like, show you a picture of an apple and they start saying a word, you're gonna be like, okay, they're saying the word for apple. But like, what if they're actually just trying to show you the, like, show you the word for fruit? Correct. You know, like, Correct. Like- <laughs> that is exactly what I'm talking about. And it's just, it, and you know, I will never call upon a spirit. I will never do a Ouija board. I will never, oh, yeah. I am not that type of girl. I don't suggest that you do that type of reaction or work but if a spirit does come forward and i do sense that they're calm and they're willing to work with me Mm -hmm. and they need to really get a message across they will like i i've seen my i've seen my both of my grandpas before i've seen two of my friends grandparents Mm -hmm. i have seen just like multiple people um and it's just it's a whole nother thing um yeah yeah it's like a whole thing i don't even know how to explain it (laughs) I just recently got to where I'm like, okay, with like calling on my ancestors because like they've really been like there for me and helped me through a lot of stuff. And specifically what's crazy is my like mom's mom um, has come through a lot for me recently. And like, she's just been there and like kind of been there and like 
like her presence been on. I didn't meet any of my grandparents except for my dad's dad, but he died when I was like, I mean, he died in 2001. I was born in 1997. So I was sure. like four years old, you know? So I don't really, I don't know him that well. Like I, um, and I've always wanted to be more connected to my family and everything. So I like have this family tree, like, um, account that's like my family tree search where it like uses public record to help like I, and it's completely free um, and it like helps connect you to your family line and stuff like that and so I've been able to find a lot of cool stuff about all my grandparents except for my mom's mom but she's the one that has always connected with me the strongest and so um, I don't know it just it was really cool but I went to earlier this year for um, my birthday my friend Debbie that I can finally say her name now she's the, she gave me permission which I mean she didn't she wasn't like she's withholding cute. permission I just always forgot to like ask her permission but her name is Debbie she's the one that anytime I'm like the unit publicist that I'm friends with from New York that's Debbie so um Debbie bought me and her tickets um to go to a medium reading at like in downtown Mobile at this apothecary that is so amazing I love it what's its name it's so I love it so much and I follow them on um social media it's just like queen co talia i think is her name and so you just like look up queen co and like i follow her so if you go to my social media you will find the account that i follow and um she did a medium reading and she said do you know she was like one of you do you know a norma like i keep hearing like a word that starts with the like the name the letter n and it sounds like norma and she was like and she's saying that she's one of your grandparents i was like that's my grandma i was like my grandma's name is norma and she was like okay cool she wants to confirm that like she's been the one with you this whole time like you've been having suspicions and she's been with you and like wants you to know that she's like watching over you and that she has like unfinished business with your family and that she like left things kind of in a bad way so she's trying to make up for it by being there with you and since you're so connected to like the other side and things like that like she wants you to know she's there with you she's giving you guidance she's has your back and she's listening and like you're helping bring her peace and i was right. like bet okay bet. Like, bet. You know, bet. Like <laughs> bruh that's so funny no that's like so. awesome i have always been told that uh my great grandma on my mom's side is someone that i need to pay attention to but mm -hmm. a i've never met them b i don't even know their name mm. like i know nothing about them so I haven't really ventured out into that part of my life yet in my spiritual journey, but yeah. definitely something I really want to because I, I do. I've always had this weird, like, thing about family. Like, I've just been so, like, I want to know my family. Like, I want to I wanna know as many people as I can kind of thing. And yeah. um, I would be really interested to kind of move forward with that in the future. Yeah, you should definitely look into that app I was telling you about or that website. It's like completely free. And if you just type in like your name and your parents name, anything that it has on them, it will pull up and say, hey, is this your parents? Like this is a public document and they'll pull up like, you know, um, like it can pull up death certificates, birth certificates, immigration papers, like literally anything like it that it has that's public record. And it'll be like, hey, is this them? And if you confirm, it will attach you to every other family member that's attached to that like certificate so it's really cool that is cool i love that yeah well i love that this went from a weird wednesday to a horror hump day to a witchy wednesday so um on that <laughs> note <laughs> on all the topics of weirdness thank you for yes, listening um, to our podcast yes and happy halloween oh my goodness i love halloween so much to close up gabby what are your like what are you being for halloween this year so I'm trying to convince my friend if she isn't already convinced because she was very hesitant on the costume. But um, I, we want to be Hades and Megara from Hercules. Oh, yes. Which one would you be? I think I'm going to be Hades. Really? I feel like, see, I feel like you would do well with either one. But for some reason, you just give me big Meg vibes. I know. It's because I'm a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um i think you mean bad bitch i mean so. correct a, that's yeah. definitely it what are you that's being? hilarious so my best friend Haley, that's in mobile um we are going out as the bear and um the may queen from midsummer oh <gasps> so Wait, that's yeah. so cool i would have yeah, never thought that, of something like that here's the thing i'm the may queen and they're the bear <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. When I said it to them, like, when I said it to them, they were like, yeah, no, they were like, oh, I'm totally, I was like, because I really want to be the main queen. I was like, I just like, I've like always, I was like, but I'm fine with it. I was like, I know I'm the dude and like, I, you know, I would fit more of the bear outfit and everything. And they were like, no, they're like, 
being the bear will make that so easy. Like all I got to do is get like bear ears or a bear head and like maybe like a bear onesie or something and I'm yeah. good to go. And I was like, okay, bet. They sell, like, like, they sell bear ears at uh, Party the Halloween store. Spirit amazing. Halloween. I think I think they used to work. It was yeah, they worked at Spirit Halloween for a really long time. So I'm sure I'm sure they know like all the ins and outs of like what they can get well, there. So I didn't know uh, that they had those until my friend was like. I need a costume. And it was literally the day of, and I was like, you could be a bear. And I handed like her, my like very tan fluffy sweatshirt and just uh-huh. gave her the ears. And that was that. It's amazing. The flashback to Halloween of my, was it junior year? Whenever I was Winnie the Pooh. That was the best and- costume. <laughs> I would have never thought great. of that. It was so yeah. good. To so tell everybody, I had little yellow ears that I put on my head, and I wore a red shirt and then khaki short or khaki pants. It was and perfect. And I um, grabbed it was like this big mix, like daiquiri mix, and I put a whole handle of vodka in it and like a big handle of vodka in it. And I took cardboard and put it around it, and I drew honeycomb on the cardboard, and I put honey in like cursive writing, like how it looks on like in Winnie the Pooh. And I just walked around drinking that all night and sharing it with people. There were other Winnie the Poohs there, but they all like got the onesie. But they all said that I was their favorite Winnie the Pooh because even though they looked more like you Winnie were the, Pooh, the best I, like, Winnie the Pooh, I literally went all out because I like made the honeycomb on the daiquiri be- uh, like tub and like was sharing with people and I'd walk up to people and be like, "You want some honey?" And, like, you know, I'm like, trying to remember <laughs> what I was that year. Like I'm in my I Instagram no right idea. now. Well, there was one time. There was a bunch. I was like a poodle like girl with my friend, um, and Amazing. we did. It was so fun. I know I was a hippie one time. Um, amazing what else was i I? hippies i love hippies what else was i i don't even remember oh i was a ninja my senior year (sighs) wow yes i love that oh and we're also Haley and i are going out with our two friends morgan and sydney morgan's been on the show sydney's going to be on the show next uh, season but so that's why i'm cool with saying their names and with Haley, i'm not sharing any personal information so that's why i'm fine with saying their name but um morgan is going to be raven from teen titans that's like a (gasps) staple go-to like yeah and she looks fire do you understand me like she looks so good I, in her raven costume i need and pictures immediately i will absolutely take we will take tons of pictures if you know me and morgan like we will take pictures so um but she always looks so good in her raven costume and so i'm excited that she i wanted her to go like in unison with us for midsummer but U- midsummer did kind of traumatize her and it's like one of mine and Haley's favorite movies so i was like all right you know if you're gonna be raven totally get it that's fine because like you look so good as Raven. And then my friend Sydney is going, <laughs> she's going as sexy Squidward. <laughs> I am obsessed with that. Is the, <clears throat> is it just like kind of doing sexy Squidward or is she going to do like where he's like all transformed and like all transformed. Oh, yeah, I love like, that. Uh, yeah. I am Cause she has like that. the face makeup where she can make that look like with contour and everything. And like, she's going to wear and she, she's going to try and find like a clarinet or recorder that she can like, carry around with her yeah uh i'm kind of like fully obsessed with that oh yeah but yeah well on that note um i think this is a good place to wrap it up correct so thank you guys so much for tuning back in for another one a weird wednesday happy halloween please go be very safe but have tons of fun check your candy check your kids candy don't (laughs) let there be razor blades or fentanyl in it okay oh my (laughs) god let me look it's a thing and like i've seen on social media where and it is funny but i'm also like you guys are like taking away from the like the actual message where people are like doing funny memes where it's like be careful i found like a semi truck in my kids candy and they like really badly photoshop a picture of a kid like you know like and i think that it, i think it is so funny but i'm also like y'all y'all are making a joke out of something that's like actually really like serious bro but anyways I swear, leave it to the internet i swear internet we're just crazy at this point yes like literally but, insane yes live live laugh love just live, live laugh, laugh love. love yeah have Correct. a good time make, take tons of pictures send them to me i want to see all your costumes pretty please even if you listen to this way after halloween i want to see your costume please yeah send me, it to me. me too um if you want to find us on social media i'm at sam if you do that's s-a-m-m-e-d if you do no spaces no funky characters um i'm that on tiktok twitter and instagram um you can also find my pinterest through my um link tree on any of those platforms i've got my link in the bio so go find my pinterest i pin all kinds of fun things i put like photography i've done on my pinterest i put um clips from the podcast i put 
uh, I'm gonna put my costume on there because you know, like freaking Pinterest eats up Halloween costumes. Facts. Um, I put all kinds of fun things on there, and so and I also have a manifestation board that I pin to, so you're more than welcome to follow it and see all the fun things that I'm manifesting. And if you want to find the podcast, you can find it at um on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and on Anchor at Enhance, and then you can find it on YouTube at Enhance Podcast. And Gabby and I, I actually haven't talked to Gabby about this yet, but I've been working on a lot of SEO stuff, and we might be on Google Podcasts soon. <gasps> so, um, yeah, so keep an eye out for that. We'll definitely announce it if we, whenever, you know, that pops on there. But, um, yeah, super exciting. Gabby, throw your links out there. Throw your accounts. Yeah, please follow me at gsabot1234 on Instagram. Um, and then on TikTok, I am GabbyS80. So just Do you want to go ahead by. and give your other Instagram, too, just in case we convert that Instagram into an official enhanced page? Sure. Um, it is gsabot97. Awesome. Cool, cool. I love it. I love everything I about love this it. podcast. Oh, something exciting. Um, because this will come out before. Let me announce this. Um, I will be speaking at a workshop in Mobile, Alabama. It'll be the first of many. They asked me to come and speak, and they even asked me to guest host. So I've been helping with all the PR. I'm doing a lot of PR coordinating. I had scheduled like a interview with a news station and everything for the two people that are heading it up. Um, that's coming this Tuesday. But it's a workshop for ha- for creatives in the area on how to get involved with film production and everything. And I'll be talking about the podcast. So it's so exciting. It's the first of many, and they even mentioned possibly letting Gabby and I do a live show at future ones too. So I think that Woo-hoo. is super fun super exciting so please 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 if you see anything about that on social media like it share it go to the website keep up with it because in the future they will also be doing um virtual seats too not this first one but in the future they'll do virtual seats and so you can get a virtual seat online to watch it from wherever you are and get all kinds of great tips here from industry leaders like um we have like producers actors all kinds of cool stuff speaking at this one from shows like uh pin 15 from the walking dead from two of the movies that were filmed in the mobile jesus revolution about my father um, all kinds of cool stuff. So definitely, definitely, definitely go check that out. I'll probably be doing an ad and putting it in here so soon. I also am posting it on my social media. So please, please, please go keep an eye out for that because that's going to really help Gabby and I grow the podcast and um, get it to a really cool spot. So yeah, go keep an eye out I'm for that. I'm so excited for you. I know. I'm excited too. And I'm excited that you and I might be able to do live shows. I know in the that I one. So cool. That is so cool. I'm like, yeah, just give yeah. me, give me a little time. I'll come. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful week. Whenever you're listening to this, be safe. Have a happy Halloween. We love you all so much. Have an oogie boogie night. Ooh. Bye. (laughs) Thanks for listening to Weird Wednesday. Tune in the third Wednesday of every month for more strange, unsettling, and spooky.